Hello friends, Tanya here for Spellbinders and today I am working with the Fresh Picked and Pretty Posies collection that were released in January 2024. We're going to do some ink blending with Thistle, Berry Smoothie, and Fruit Punch. These are the Hero Hues reactive inks from Hero Arts. I just re-inked all of them so it was time to play with them. I have a piece of, hmm, this must be eight and a half by five and a half inches, a half sheet of cardstock. Maybe it's larger, I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm going to start with the Berry Smoothie ink in the center of the cardstock using a mini ink blender. And then I'm going to do thistle on one end. You can see that these were freshly re-inked because that is some wet ink. The Hero Hues reactive inks have similar, um, they're, a, they're a hybrid ink like the Distress Oxides, but they don't have the chalky component. They do ink blend very well and they do uh, react really nicely to water. They go on a lot easier than a dye ink. They go on faster, the pigment helps some of the color rest on top of the, the paper. And this doesn't look like a perfect blending, but it will get better, I promise. I'm going to take some of this pearlized water and spritz it over the ink that's left on my mat and use that to help pick up that color and add some shimmer, shine, and just a little bit more blending to the cardstock. Now I went ahead and did that with a bunch of different colors. So I have a rainbow of blends here. Then I took a piece of green cardstock and salvage patino and twisted citron distress oxide spray and the bubbling cauldron distress mica stain. I'm going to spritz this green cardstock because I want a lot of color variation and a bit of a watercolor look to this cardstock before I use it to die cut some greenery. I've applied the Twisted Citron and the Salvage Patina. I know that doesn't sound like a very good green cardstock blend, but it really does turn out beautiful. Follow through, wait till it's all dry. It will look really well. Um, I'm going to use my heat tool to dry this cardstock. For me, this also seems to help the mica stain not rub off of the cardstock. Either it decreases it, depending on how much I used. If I used three colors and I did a pretty heavy saturation with each of those colors, you're still gonna have some of the mica stain or the mica wipe off when you rub it. Um, but if you heat set and you're only using one color, you aren't doing heavily saturated uh, layers, it's not going to be too bad. Here you're gonna see the two different colors. Be the difference between the spritzed and the not spritzed. Here are the fresh picked anemones. I have gone ahead and die cut all of these pieces. I used that first piece that we ink blended and the green that we spritzed. I also die cut some brushed gold cardstock and some of the mirror gold cardstock to create the layers for the centers of these flowers. Now there are three different sized flower heads and three different sized centers. These are all just variations of the same design in different sizes. So you're going to have some variety to pick and choose from and some, lot, some different ways you can arrange these flowers. There are four different stems and the unique thing of the fresh picked line is that when you've assembled all of the pieces of the flowers, they will fit on an A2 size card front and fill the entire card front. It's really a fun concept. You can also take the individual pieces and arrange them in other ways and you don't have to use all of the pieces for the design to look complete. I'm looking forward to mixing the different dyes. I got the um, the berries, the buttercups, and uh, the anemones. And I think it would combine well with the December, 
was it large dye of the month? It was another uh, flower design, very similar to this fresh paint, uh, picked line. I should actually pull that out and try to combine it. Yeah, that's on the list of things to do. I'm assembling these flower heads together. I'm only going to show you how to do the one set of these. I actually die cut enough to make three card fronts if I used all of the pieces. I did discover, however, since there are four stems and only three flower heads with one die cutting of all of the dies, you do need a fourth flower head to complete this. So I did go back and cut um, more flower heads. So I have a couple extra to play with in each color way. But um, I chose to use the smallest of the three flower sizes to add the last flower head on these um, stems. I did use a heavyweight block to add a little extra weight on the um, mirror card and the brushed cardstock layers because that mirror card takes a few more minutes to dry. The flowers are like a cupped flower and I only put glue on the bottom edge of the top layer of the petals so that I can easily tuck the other layers inside. I did use the tip of my tweezer to um, help loosen that a little bit so I can slide that centerpiece in easier. And I did decide to use the extra layer of color so that it is two tones on the inside of the, of the flower head. Now I'm going to, I kind of followed the graphics on the packaging to decide which flower head size to put on which stem, but you could honestly put whichever flower head size you wanted. There are different sizes to the part that you're connecting to, but again, I think it um, is very versatile and you can choose to use a different size. You can use a large flower head on a small uh, connector and vice versa. There are all four of the stems and you can see how they just kind of tuck together and create a nice background. Next I pulled out the You Are Everything Sentiments. This is a better press plate and die. This is another one of those fantastic sentiment sets where it uh, presses or foils because remember you can foil with all of these better press plates which I love absolutely love that versatility and then this one also die cuts all of those sentiments at once so I'm going to line those up I use some watercolor cardstock and yes I was reusing a piece that uh, someone had been playing on I think it was one of my grandkids didn't like their project set that piece of cardstock aside or watercolor paper and I am making the best use of it. I die cut this. I did use um, Versifying Claire Nocturne ink to do the better press image with. And then we're going to pull out the flower stems. Now these two uh, better press plates are from the Pretty Posies collection. This one has a bunch of different flowers that are very reminiscent of, oh, a daisy or a chrysanthemum, something with fluttery petals and I'm laying them on my plate my uh, glimmer foil plate to decide well actually I'm trying to cover a five and a half by eight and a half inch piece of cardstock because I intend to make a five by seven card so I'm trying to layer these in a nice random pattern and then I'm going to layer some I think this is is this polished brass? No, I think it's gold. This is gold glimmer foil and my plate or my platform is not heated up yet. So my foil doesn't want to lay nice and flat. I did take it over to the system, heat it up, set the timer, ran it through the die cut machine. Now I have rearranged the flowers because I need about a two inch section more to get covered. And I did ultimately slide those flowers down further on the platform, let them heat back up and run that through the die cut machine again. And this is the result. 
nice foiled background. I did also foil three of those images separately and I'm going to use the coordinating dies to die cut those. I intend to use one of those on the inside of the card because you know we have to decorate the inside. Next we're going to use one of the essential modern ovals to create a background or a backdrop for our flowers so they really pop on the card front. I'm using Tattered Rose Distress Oxide and I'm using the Fruit Punch Hero Hues Reactive Ink. These will actually play very well together. I'm going to start with the Tattered Rose and ink blend that nicely and then we'll come in with the Fruit Punch. Just going to get a nice heavy layer on here. Love using my mini distress or mini ink blenders from the distress line. And then I'm just going to come back with the tattered rose and do a little overlapping to ink blend those. I was debating using the pearlized water and decided against that. I wanted the, the different textures or, or amounts of shine to really separate the flowers from the background. I've cut the foiled background down to four and a half by six and a half inches and adhered that to a five by seven card base with a little bit of extra cardstock behind each of these layers to add some extra dimension and strength. We'll center our beautiful oval on the center here and then I do add a little extra cardstock, didn't I? I think I added extra cardstock behind the flower heads. Yes, I did. I have some scrap cardstock here that I pulled out, added that to the back of the flower head, and we'll let the stems adhere directly to that oval. We'll get another little scrap and add that to the flower head on the smaller section. And add some glue in strategic spots on the stem and then we will nestle that in next to our larger stem. I love how they curve together so beautifully. Then I'm taking the happy birthday sentiment from that uh, Better Press sentiment set and we'll layer that right over the top of the stems. Just making sure that's nice and straight. I did use extra cardstock behind that also. Then we have these pretty pink sequins from the advent calendar from this year. I thought it would be a good match to this card's color palette. So I'm going to add a few dots of glue and I'm going to add these to the card front. There are some light pink, let's see, I think it's aura or hmm, there is a pink sequin set that you can get from Spellbinder. So if you don't have, if you didn't get the advent calendar, you can pick up some sequins from the shop that come with three sizes of sequins. This one only has two. I prefer sequin sets that have at least three sets, uh, three sizes of sequins. Um, but these are pretty and they worked out really well. Now I'm taking the foiled and die cut flower and one of the other sentiments from those better press sets and I adhered those to the inside of the card. That completes our beautiful fresh picked anemones card. I hope you liked it. I had fun putting it together. I've assembled a bunch of the other fresh picked sets of uh, flowers and we'll be creating some cards with those for you to see soon. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done that. Leave me a comment. I love to hear what you have to say. If you're interested in any of the product I used today, check that description box below. They will be listed and linked as always. And until next time, here are a couple more videos I thought you might enjoy. Bye-bye.